Hello Year 2s and welcome to our Active Read lesson. Before we begin reading, we're going to practice some red words. I'm going to do them with my turn, your turn. I'll hold them up to the screen for you to practice. And then I'm going to give you a game to play as well. So let's begin. My turn, find. Your turn. My turn, couldn't. Your turn. My turn, door, your turn. My turn, floor, your turn. My turn, prove, your turn. My turn, children, your turn. My turn, steak, your turn. My turn, clothes, your turn. My turn, everybody, your turn. My turn, haven't, your turn. My turn, climb, your turn. Well done. And a game that you could play. Now you can either choose to use the words I just said, or you could ask your grown-ups to have a look on our website. I'll put the link in this post to find some red words that you need to practice. And you could write them down on paper. I'd like you to copy each word twice and then play a snap game with them. Okay, we are now going to have a look at our active read lesson. So I'm going to share my screen again with you. And we're going to go to the next page now. And you'll see here that we have our active read symbols. So for our lesson, you are going to need some pens or a pencil, some paper and those listening ears. We're going to be practicing our comprehension skills and we do this through answering questions. We have six types of questions known as our vipers and we use these symbols and we see these in our active read lessons all the time. So just to remind you, they are V for vocabulary, I for inference, P for prediction, E for explanation, R for retrieval, S for sequence and summary. You'll see these throughout the text and I have split our text into four sections so you can keep pausing the video and you can do this over one day or you could pause it and do it over a few days if you wish. Main focus is going to be inference. I can make inferences from a text. What is non-fiction? I'd like you to pause the video here, have a chat with either a brother or sister at home or a grown up and talk about what these type of texts are. Well done. I hope you had a good conversation. Non-fiction writing is true information. So they come from things like letters, diaries, we even have books and it always provide us with something that is true. Okay, here is our book for this week. It is called Victorian Seaside Holidays and it is a non-fiction book. So we're going to find out lots of facts about this, this part of the past. So how do you know that this book is about the past? Do you know anything about Victorian seasides? Pause here and write down your answers. I'm going to read the blurb to you. Victorian seaside holidays. How much do you know about Victorian seaside holidays? What did Victorians wear on the beach? What were seaside fun fairs like? Find the answers to these questions in, seaside, in Victorian seaside holidays and see how Victor holidays in Victorian times compare with the ones we go on today. The Life in the Past series explores familiar topics showing what these were like during Queen Victoria's reign. A wide range of contemporary Victorian illustrations and extracts from primary sources provide stimulating evidence as readers are encouraged to learn more about this fascinating era. So I have some questions for you now. Your first question is an inference question. What do you think seaside funfairs were like? Do you think they're the same as they are now? Why? What does the author mean when they say 
see how holidays in Victorian times compare with ones we go on today. Pause the video here to write down your answers. Contents page. So our contents page gives us a really quick summary of all the things that we could find out in this book. So you don't have to read a non-fiction text in order. You haven't got the book at home, so you will have to listen to me reading it in order for you. What I'd like you to do now is listen to this question and then pause the video to answer them. What is the purpose of a contents page? And on which pages would you find information on picnics and snacks, a dip in the sea, who were the Victorians? Who were the Victorians? Queen Victoria reigned in Britain from 1837 to 1901. People who lived during this time are called Victorians. Life was very different in 1837. There were no motor cars, aeroplanes or computers then and you've got a picture of Queen Victoria in a horse-drawn carriage. Because you can't see it in that image, I've popped one down on the right hand for you so you can see what it was like. Here are your questions, your vocabulary question. What does the word reigned mean? And your inference question, why were people that lived during this time called Victorians? Pause here to write down your answers. During Victoria's reign, men, women and children began to work in new factories in town. They worked long hours for very little money. And at the start of Victoria's reign, only rich people could afford holidays. And this photograph is a Victorian photograph that shows a girl working in a cotton mill. A retrieval question, so remember to use the text to answer it. Who could afford to go on holidays? And your inference question, how would you have felt if you'd worked in a factory instead of going to school? Why would you have felt like that? Pause here to write your answer. And now you might want to have a pause, have a break and come back to this video another time. Or you can carry on with session two. So now we're going to be focusing on retrieval questions. I can retrieve an answer from a text. So you've got to look back through rather than trying to guess the answer. So before we begin, if you did pause, here's some questions to help jog your memory. You can pause here and either write your answers down or you can discuss these with a grown up or someone else at home. Holidays then and now. Seaside holidays grew very popular during Victoria's reign. People thought the air was clean and refreshing beside the sea. They thought bathing in the sea was healthy too. And here's a picture. This isn't a photograph, this is a painting of what uh, it's believed Victorian families relaxing and playing on the sands. This is what they believed it might have looked like. And your question, why did people think the beach air was clean and refreshing? Today, people still go on seaside holidays. They go for many of the same reasons as the Victorians, for sunshine and fresh air, to play in the sand and to have change from home and work. And here's a picture of some children making sand castles on the beach. And your questions for this part of our book. Why do we go to the seaside? And this is an explanation question now. What games can you play at the seaside? Either tell someone your answers or write them down. You can pause the video here. All aboard! By the 1840s, railways were being built right around Britain. People could now travel more quickly and cheaply. Soon, many people were travelling by train to the seaside. This picture shows a busy Victorian railway station in 1869. Here are your questions. How did Victorians get to the seaside before trains? Why were the railways built? Why do you think more people travelled to the seaside? Why do you think more people travelled to the seaside now? 
and you can pause here to answer your questions. Towards the end of the Victorian age, motor cars were invented. Later, motor car uh, coaches called chamberbanks, and I hope I've pronounced that properly, became popular. Chamberbanks took people, sorry, took groups of people out for a day trips called an excursion. And here are some people in a charabank at the seaside, and this was going to a seaside town in Devon. So you've got some vocabulary and retrieval questions here. What was invented towards the end of the Victorian age? What is a charabank? What was a day trip called? Pause to answer your questions. Beside the seaside, as the railways spread, Holiday resorts grew up along the coasts. Most people travelled to the seaside nearest their home. For example, most Glasgow factory workers went on holiday along the Firth of Clyde. And here's a painting of a popular Victorian resort of Scarborough in North East England. So here are your retrieval questions. Where would most people travel to? Where would the work factory workers from Glasgow go? And here's an extra challenge after this lesson. Can you find that on a map? Pause here to answer your questions. Holiday makers sent postcards home. They told friends and relatives what a good time they were having, just as people do today. This message is from a Victorian postcard. Dear Wynne, just a line to let you know we are enjoying ourselves A1. Love, Reg. And here's another painting of some children enjoying building sandcastles. And your questions for this part of the text. What did holidaymakers send home? Have you ever sent one? Who to? Pause here to answer your questions. And again, you can stop here and carry on another time. If you wish to carry on, you can just carry on playing the video. So now we're going to be focusing on vocabulary. And it's really important to focus on vocabulary sometimes because we need to understand the meaning of words to understand what the text is telling us. So again, as before, here are some retrieval questions if you paused the video and are carrying on. You can pause here to discuss these to refresh yourself of the text. Rich and poor. Rich people took long holidays. Some families stayed by the sea for several weeks. Many stayed in expensive hotels. Some rich families started to go abroad for their holidays too. We've got another painting and this says of rich people could afford long, long luxurious holidays like these people in France. Your vocabulary questions. What do the following words mean? Expensive, luxurious. Find one word or phrase that means people went to another country for their holiday. Pause here to answer your questions. Ordinary people also started having short holidays. Many factories closed for a week in the summer. Factory workers saved up to stay in lodging houses. These were cheaper than hotels. Coach loads of, of London children set off for a day's holiday in 1876. Can you see how busy that coach is? Are our coaches like that now? And you've got some different types of questions here. How long did the factory workers have off in the summer? What is a lodging house? How would you feel if you work long hours and might only have holiday for one day? Pause here to either write down the questions or verbally answer them. Or write down the answers, you don't want to write down the questions. Dressing up, covering up. Victorians liked to keep their bodies private. On the beach, men, women and children wore their normal clothes. Everything must have got very sandy. And here's another painting of people fully dressed on the beach. Why did Victorians wear normal clothes on the beach? Would this have been comfortable? Why? 
You can pause here to answer your questions. Everyone wore their best clothes at the seaside. Holidays were a chance to show off fashionable clothes. If they could afford to, people bought new clothes for their holidays. And here you can see there's a picture of a man wearing a bowler hat. And it was a very, very popular hat back in the Victorian times. And these are some people walking on the promenade at Little Hampton in Sussex. And they're all wearing suits and dresses for their day at the beach. What is a promenade? Why would people wear their best clothes at the seaside? Pause here to answer the questions. A dip in the sea. Victorians thought that bathing in the sea was healthy. Even people who could not swim went in for a dip. They changed into their swimsuits in wooden huts on wheels called bathing machines. And here's a picture of the bathing machines and they were wheeled right out into the sea. And your questions. What is a bathing machine? What does the author mean when they say went in for a dip? Pause here to answer your questions. At the start of Victorian's reign, swimsuits had long sleeves and legs. Even so, men and women swam in different parts of the sea at many resorts. By the end of the Victorian times, things were less strict. And here's another painting and this says, these bathing suits are from 1876. With short sleeves and legs, they were quite daring. Why do you think it was daring to wear a swimsuit? Why do you think men and women sat, swam in different parts of the sea? What is a resort? Pause here to answer your questions. On the beach. Victorian children played in the sand with buckets and spades. Just as children do today, they were kept busy with other activities too, such as looking for wildlife in rock pools, this Victorian poem is about a visit to a beach. When I was down beside the sea, a wooden spade they gave to me to dig the sandy shore. My holes were empty like a cup. In every hole the sea came up till it could not no more. And that was written by Robert, Robert Lewis Stevenson. How did the children keep busy on the beach? What do you like doing on the beach and why? Pause here to answer your questions. There were children's entertainments on the beach. Puppet shows were very popular. Punch and Judy were a traditional favorite. A donkey ride came along the, a donkey ride along the sand was another treat. And here is a picture of children watching a Punch and Judy puppet show on the beach. What is the name of the popular puppet show? What other treat might the children get to do? Describe some activities that we take part in at the beach now. Pause here to answer your questions. And here is another activity that you can do. You can pause this screen in a moment. It's a word association game. So in the middle of a piece of paper, you can write the word seaside and around it, you can write as many words as you can to do with the seaside. Could you include any new ones that you've learned from the Victorian period as well? Pause now, and then you can start this activity if you want to. Again, you might like to pause and finish reading the story another day or another time during the day. This is the final part of our book, and we're now going to be looking at explaining our ideas and opinions. So like before, if you had a break, you might need to refresh yourself about the text we've been reading. So you can pause the screen here to answer the questions. Picnics and snacks. Victorian picnics were, quite oft, were often quite grand. Rich people's servants would pack a basket full of treats. They used proper plates, saucers, and oh, sorry, I've read that wrong. They used proper cups, saucers, and plates. There were a, that there was a lot to carry on the beach. I hope you're reading better than me, boys and girls. I think I need to keep practicing. 
and here's another painting of people drinking their tea on the beach. What does the author mean by picnics were often quite grand? What is different about the picnics we have today? All kinds of food and snacks were sold at stalls during the sea, along the seafront. Seafood was popular, such as whelks or jellied eels. Ice cream was an expensive treat. This picture shows a wooden machine for making ice cream. It was used before electric freezers were invented. So you can see a very clear poster there of the sort of ice cream machines that they would have had back in the Victorian times. Use the glossary to find out what a whelk is. And I've popped that in the comments for you so you can see the glossary without needing to go to the end of the video. How do Victorians make ice cream? Why? Piers and promenades. There were lots of things to do at the seaside as well as playing on the beach. Holiday makers could enjoy strolling along the seafront on new promenades. Many resorts had a bandstand and beautiful flower gardens. And here is a photograph of a band playing on the promenade by the sea in Ryle, Wales. Who would perform on a bandstand? During Victorian times, attractions were built to make resorts more popular. The Blackpool Tower was a famous attraction. In many resorts, a platform called a pier was built stretching right out over the sea. The Blackpool Tower was built between 1892 and 1894. What do you think, it, sorry, why do you think it was, as import, it was important to make the resorts more popular? Do you know any other famous beach landmarks or piers? On an extra sneaky question, have you ever seen Blackpool Tower before? Trips and treats. Victorian holiday makers enjoyed excursions. Paddle boats and streamers sailed along the coast for a short trip to see the sights. Taking a ride on the water was very popular. And here you can see a photograph from the Victorian times of where they're in their boat. And this is a picture of one of those steamers. And you can see the steam tunnel and the paddle wheel. And I've added an extra picture there if it's not clear enough. A vocabulary question. What is the coast? And an explanation question. How do we get to see the sites now? Every resort had a theatre. Holiday makers could see musical shows, acrobats and other exciting treats. Resorts competed to book the most popular circus, pantomime or performers for the summer season. Here's a poster advertising a Victorian trampeze artist called Grace, Graceful Gertorella. She looks a little bit like an acrobat to me. I can tell that by the way she's swinging on the rope. And you've got some explanation questions. Do you think theatres made resorts more popular? Why do you think this? Which act would you have enjoyed seeing the most and why? All the fun of the fair. Fun fairs were very popular during Victorian times. There were big dippers, merry-go-rounds and lots of other amusements at the seaside. Many of these rides are still popular today. Have you ever been to the fun fair? Which ride did you enjoy most? Victorians loved to see strange and wonderful shows. They paid to watch people do tricks at the fun fair such as weightlifting or dancing on horseback. Animal acts were very popular. This Victorian strongman is lifting heavy weights or dumbbells. Why do you think the Victorians enjoyed seeing strange and wonderful shows? What is the man in the picture called? What does he have, what, why, that should say, why does he have that name? Let's find out. Have you ever been to the seaside in Britain? Many Victorian seaside resorts are popular today. You can still see Victorian hotels, piers and other buildings there. And here are some children enjoying a donkey ride on Blackpool Beach. And you've got the tower in the background. 
What do you love most about our seaside resort? So we're very lucky to live so close to South End on Sea. Today, many people fly abroad for holidays in warmer places. Some resorts are less popular now and they are growing shabby. Do you think we should have more seaside holidays in Britain? In the winter, very few people go to the seaside resorts. The piers are not well looked after as they used to be. And your question, do you think there should be more sea we should have more seaside holidays in Britain and why? And what could British seasides do to make them more popular again or even make sure they look after them during the winter months when not many people visit us? Here is a timeline um, of the Victorian era from 1830 all the way to 1901. You can pause here to answer the questions because they are retrieval questions. So I'm going to let you read through this part on your own. Your questions, who organised the first railway excursion? When were bank holidays introduced? Pause here and I'd like you to read through and see if you can answer those. And here is your glossary. Like I said, I'm going to put it in the comments and I'll link it in our remote learning PDF as well. So if you want to have this either in front of you or have read it before you read the book, it'll give you an idea of some of that vocabulary that you will be able to see throughout the book. And our final page is the index page. When you have the book in front, front of you, an index page is really important. So I've got the question for you, why do most non-fiction books have an index? Maybe you could find out or tell someone what you know about indexes. Now your final activity for reading this week is a comparison table and I've linked it in your remote learning. I'd like you to write a list of similarities and differences between Victorian seasides and seasides now. Can you think about what's the same? What do we still have that the Victorians have? And what's different? What do we do now that they didn't do? Thank you for listening. Remember, you can pause this video as much as you want so you can use it across the whole week. Enjoy reading and I'll see you again next week for another lesson. Bye.